Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about the best study resources in your first two years of medical school. So the resource that pretty much everyone has heard about is the first aid for the USMLE Step 1 Medical Licensing Exam. And if you had to invest in one resource, I would say that first aid is probably the resource that you need to invest in. And what you can do is purchase uh, a copy of first aid in your first year and then annotate it the first two years and then have a nice annotated copy um, by the time your dedicated board studying comes around. I would also recommend you maybe have a searchable PDF copy that you can perhaps find online or through a friend. And this allows you to quickly search up different diseases, pathologies, and different topics that you're trying to study. However, one thing about first aid is that first aid is more of a compilation of different outlines, tables, and diagrams, and it's not really a good primary resource learning material. So I recommend using other resources as your primary learning material sources and using first aid more as a review tool or a way to see what topics or information is most relevant and high yield to the step one so that you can target your studies towards those topics and that information. So now I'm going to talk about a few of the primary learning resources that I recommend. So for primary learning resources lectures are obviously available to everyone and especially in the beginning of medical school I'd recommend going to lectures usually your first block especially is a mix of biochemistry immunology and a few other different topics like maybe uh, public health and since the topics are pretty scattered it's helpful to actually go to class and figure out what information is probably going to be tested uh, on your test during the first block different schools do this differently so it's kind of hard to look at other schools and figure out what topics will be tested for your particular exams however as medical school goes on and you you figure out what resources that you like to use, how you best study, and topics tend to be more focused on just one organ system as, at a time since most schools are organ systems based nowadays. I find it to be less and less efficient for myself and a lot of students to actually go to class. If you still want to go through the lecture material, you could uh, stay at home and look through recorded lectures since most schools record the lectures nowadays. However, what I found later on, especially in my uh, later first year and uh, especially my second year of medical school, is that I find it most efficient to just skim the lectures, look at whatever topics were covered, and use the, uh, just use those focus points to cater my actual studying around instead of using the lectures, since lectures do have a lot of extra information. Uh, the caveat to, to this would be if you find that you learn better in the classroom, obviously, if you have a hard time being disciplined studying on your own and again if it's like the first block where, where topics are really scattered or your school adopts that kind of class structure where it's not exactly aligned with one specific organ system at a time. So whether you go to a lecture or you don't, there are a few great video resources that you can use to supplement or use as your primary source of learning. Uh, the first is Boards and Beyond by Dr. Ryan, and he does a great job of taking uh, big topics and condensing them into concise 10 to 30 minute videos where he breaks down the topic, talks about everything that's high yield, but still brings con uh, important contextual information and clinical correlates and things like that. Besides Boards and Beyond, Pathoma is also a great resource that a lot of students have heard about, and Dr. Sitar does a brilliant job of taking pathologies and breaking them down into simple concepts that you can easily in internalize and then later used to build up to um, higher level details even if you forget those higher level higher level details later on. Unfortunately, mostly focuses on pathology. So I would say the best video resource combination would be to use Boards and Beyond for just everything in general and then use Pathoma, especially for the pathology. I would say Pathoma and Boards and Beyond are the best video resources and pretty much all you really need. However, there are a few other resources that you can use and Pathoma and Boards and Beyond are paid. So if you're not trying to invest in those resources, you can use other resources as well. So one would be the USMLE RX videos. It's another paid service, but the I've, some, some of my classmates find, found those helpful. You can use the Kaplan Lectures, which again are paid. I believe there's things like Doctors in Training and other ones that I didn't really use. There's also plenty of free video resources that are good as well. For example, Khan Academy, Khan Academy of Medicine are pretty good. Uh, Armando Hasidangan makes uh, good videos. I found Osmosis actually to be one of the best, I think free or mostly free online video resource service. And it's kind of similar where Osmosis reviews a different topic and presents it in a concise and nicely uh, laid out way. So for free video resources, I would recommend Osmosis and a few of the other channels and services that I mentioned. There's also online med ed, which I've heard some third and fourth years use, but I actually found it helpful in my first and second year as well. It focuses a little bit more on clinically important factors, but I found that to be more engaging to me and helped me remember concepts better. There's also Yosemite Express, which kind of goes through first aid, but provides more context to the topics. As always, you can uh, just search a topic that you're not familiar with or you're trying to understand better on YouTube or another video service and a lot of great videos pop up. Besides the video lectures I mentioned, there's also Golian lectures. Some of my friends just have the audio downloaded on their phones and they just uh, listen to it throughout 
throughout the day. I find it to be a little bit dense, but some people like it, so you can try that out if you'd like. Some of my classmates who do it very well also use Robin's Pathology. It's a pretty t thick textbook, but if you read through Robin's, you get a very good sense of pathology and you have a great foundational knowledge that you can use throughout the rest of your medical career. It's not necessary, but it's nice to know. So the next would be video services that help you remember different facts. The gold standard for this, I would say, would be the Sketchy Medical series. This covers microbiology, pathology, and pharmacology. I personally find that the microbiology is gold, and I prefer a lot more over the pharmacology and pathology. What the Sketchy videos are, are they're basically pictures that are drawn out, and each part of the picture is symbolic of an important fact that you need to remember. So by laying out this picture and painting this picture, you're able to have a mnemonic device for remembering different high yield important details for the different topics like um, microbiology. I believe other services have popped up that kind of do something similar. For example, Picmonic does something similar and you can check that out as well. However, for these kind of videos, I feel like Sketchy tends to be the best. Besides these mnemonic videos, another important resource is flashcards. And for flashcards, there are a couple main flashcard services that people use. So the first that I personally use the most is Anki, which is a customizable free flashcard service. You can either make your own cards by looking through lectures and first aid or other resources and some of my classmates that do very well do this. However, there are a couple of decks online that are really popular that people have used to do well on the board exams and they've used throughout their first two years and these would be the bros deck and the zonki deck these cover pretty much everything that you need to know for the step one and they're good tools to help you memorize important facts that you may forget simply just passively reading lecture or primary resource material these decks can be found on the medical school subreddit and i'll link this and all the resources that i mentioned down below in the description box there's also other decks as well that you can find on the medical school subreddit like the pepper deck which covers uh, some of the sketchy videos to help you better remember the sketchy associations and there are other ones you can find online or again make your on your own or share with your friends as well. Besides Anki there's also Firecracker which is another popular service. Firecracker is popular since it's actually fact checked and verified by the um, creators and Firecracker kind of does all the work for you so you don't have to make your own flashcards or try to find different flashcards or figure out if there's mistakes in flashcards. Firecracker also has other benefits like having case studies and uh, different decks for example like dedicated step one study deck that's more focused on the high yield facts versus like general learning for your first years of medical school. And you can go through and figure out what topics you want to select and include in, in your decks depending on what block you're in. So Anki and Firecracker I would say are the best flashcard services. There's also things like Memorang and some people even use Quizlet and other services as well but I would say if you stick to Anki or Firecracker you should be well off. For flashcards there's also uh, USMLA flash facts I think but I didn't really use it. So the next important group of resources are the question banks. So Question banks are highly valuable and I highly recommend using question banks during your first year in medical school to help you review topics, figure out what areas you're weak in, and also just to learn the information better. For question banks, I'd recommend the Kaplan Question Bank, which was nicely structured in my opinion, and you can do the different organ systems and select what topics you want to be tested on throughout your first two years, depending on whatever block you're covering. You can also do this with the USMLE RX, I believe it's called, uh, Question Bank. There's Pass Test, which is free. Kaplan and USMLE are paid. And what I like to also do was uh, read through first aid cases and I'd cover so first aid cases has a case with a question and then a section where it explains the question in detail so I'd cover up the explanation and I would use those as questions as well and I found that to be helpful also firecracker does have a uh, question section I believe with like case studies and things like that there's also other services that you can use but those tend to be the most effective bang for your buck question banks as you get closer to the step one exam you can start using UWorld however in my opinion it's best to use these question banks throughout your first years and save UWorld for closer to your dedicated studying period so you have a fresh bank of questions to use. URL is made by the actual test maker so it tends to be the best resource for questions. So for some subject specific resources. For anatomy, there are different websites online like the University of Arizona's website and the University of Michigan website that have different tables of muscles, innervations, functions, origins, and insertions, all these things that are really helpful. I would highly recommend using an online 3D modeling system like BioDigital where you can manipulate a online model and has different features where you can toggle on and off different nerves and muscles and it has background information about those different uh, structures. And it gives you a great 3D representation of that structure in space. Definitely, definitely have 
a good atlas or two for anatomy. So Netters is uh, one of the best. There's also uh, others like I think Taime or Team, which is good as well. There's also schools like Stony Brook, which have sites that are very, very valuable for testing. And I highly recommend checking those out. They have questions where you can select different topics and different structures, and you can have a cadaver based questions for ID and function, things like that. Also recently I came across Dr. Webb's recommendation of the University of Wisconsin's Gross Anatomy Dissection Video Library. All the dissections are done very well. So definitely try to take advantage of this. Again, you can always Google things and Wikipedia even has a lot of great resources for learning anatomy. My school had weekly clinical cases and yours may as well. And for these, I recommend using up to date which is a online service that basically provides background and relevant information like diagnostic considerations, management, workup, and evidence-based guidelines for treatment. And so the whole thing's evidence-based and well-researched and even doctors use it to get a better sense of different pathologies and cases and figure out how to work through these different cases. And so I'd highly recommend using that for clinical cases if you have weekly clinical cases or for when you're trying to see patients for your doctoring or OSCE or medical skills class. So up to date is paid so your school may or may not have access to that service. There's also things like eMedicine or Medscape, which is basically a similar concept, but it's free and you can check that out as well. Also, uh, our school, pretty much everyone used Google Slides. Since the clinical cases were a group-based project and you can use that as well. I think in the beginning, some people were trying to use PowerPoints and send them to each other, but Google Slides is a great resource that you can use to collaborate with people on a project, like a PowerPoint uh, style presentation. For your OSCE or medical skills or doctoring classes, I would recommend, again, up to date to get a better sense of the background and diagnostic considerations, differential diagnoses, and how to manage and work out patients better. However, our school also had access to Harrison's Guide for Internal Medicine, and this was really great for getting a deeper look at the background and different questions to ask and how different questions could lead to different possibilities and differential diagnoses. So if you have access to Harrison's, I would highly recommend using that since it is more detailed than up-to-date or Medscape, and it's better for forming, in my opinion, some sort of clinical approach to seeing patients and what questions to ask them and other relevant considerations. Our school had access to Bates and we kind of based our medical skills classes around Bates. If you have Bates, Bates is pretty good and you can use that. Geeky Medics is a free medical skills video based service. I believe they also have things written out as well. They go through the different organ systems and talk through different physical exams and important findings and differentials for the different organ systems and relevant pathologies associated with different departments like ob or surgery or musculoskeletal issues. UCSD has a great website that's mostly text-based but it lays out all the different considerations in your clinical diagnosis, your physical exam, your history, all these things. Again, a YouTube search can be very helpful in, in this regard. Sometimes Stanford might have a good video about a certain physical exam and Harvard might have a good video on a different physical exam. And just YouTube searching the topic that you're interested in in physical exam often presents good results. So there are some resources that I recommend that to do well during your first two years of medical school. Again, I'll include a link to the description of all of them down below in the description box. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions, comments, suggestions. I hope some of this was useful to you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck studying.